Hi, David Weck, and I want to talk to you about a concept called the coiling core. There are two primary forms of core strength that we want to develop. One is the bracing core, two is the coiling core. Now the bracing core, that's what we think of when we think of conventional core strength. Spine in neutral, trunk pressurized, it allows you to lift very heavy objects safely and effectively. Its primary application is the weight room, deadlifts, squats, etc., where you really want to brace to the core to build that fundamental strength. It's going to help everything else that you do. The coiling core is all about rotation, and its application is to everything else. Athletics, daily life movement. You're not bracing your core to move athletically. You're not bracing your core to move in daily life. You are getting the power from rotation. Now, the two principal underlying factors in WEC method training that we want to strengthen are one, tensional balance, and two, rotational power. For tensional balance, when we're building the root of our strength, training the bracing core, we do a very specific setup where we turn the feet out, we load the ground through the fourth and fifth metatarsals. So we're not wading through the heels, and then we do a a matching the spine and shin angle to create this tensional balance. Not loading through the heels allows our body to subtly adjust for any imbalances, and everybody has imbalances, that creates the optimal suspension of the skeleton within the body to create the optimal transmission and distribution of force so that we can apply that force most productively to and from the ground and most productively to any object that you happen to be manipulating. So that's our bracing core approach, two feet to create that tensional balance using the bracing core. And that's sort of the maximum strength that you're gonna develop. On the other side of it, we need the rotational power. And this is where we train the coiling core. And it's based on a technique called the head over foot technique. In order for you to be balanced on one foot, neutral spine, the head has to be directly over the foot. You can test it out right now by standing normal. Don't move the head, don't move the spine. Lift one foot, can't sustain it at all. It's not balanced, which means if you're landing on the ground and at that maximum impact, you're not aligned, you have a fundamental imbalance. So you can't be tensionally balanced because there is a compensatory adjustment within your body to hit that ground. So you're not getting the maximum to and from force that's productive. You can't maximize the force to and you can't capture the force from when you're not balanced. So the head over foot technique is what we use in locomotion and locomotion being the fundamental function that we're going to build everything else on. And the way that we get from one foot to the other is we use the coiling core. So it involves this concept that the frontal plane is first. Side bending is the key. The concept is called spinal engine. The spine is curved, which means that side bending creates rotation. And it's just mechanical. It's your anatomy and that's just the way it functions. The curvature in the spine means that this side bending creates this counter rotation. So the lats become sort of our cueing target for how we're going to coil the core. And it's the side bending action, frontal plane first, that priority that puts it all into play. And so what I'm going to talk about in this video is developing the coiling core and why if you develop the coiling core and you do it properly, you have the very seed, the, the foundation, the center of rotational power. So if you're just doing, let's say, med ball toss, tosses, you know, taking a med ball and tossing as hard as you can to the side, or taking a cable and, and you're rotating with it, unless you're specifically aiming your efforts to enhance that coiling core, you're not developing the true root and the foundation for rotational power. And so any given drill that you're doing is not being optimized because you're not building on the, the most solid foundation.
And when you understand the principles of training the coiling core, fortifying that, the balance, the strength, the coordination of it, is going to make you perform any drill better. You'll throw a med ball more effectively, faster, more powerful, when you've developed the coiling core. You will play any sport you do. Straight ahead, multi-direction, throwing, hitting, punching, etc., is enhanced by this rotational power, harnessing the spinal engine. Concept is strengthening the coiling core. I want to be clear that we want the bracing core, as strong as it can be, we want the coiling core. And this is the one that is not commonly understood, the coiling core. So this is the big opportunity for you to enhance your game big time, elevate your ability to move with strength and power, harness all that strength you've built through the bracing core into application. So here it is. With the coiling core, you want to really understand that it is this side bending that's going to create the coil. And that means that there's this counter rotation. And the more that you can take this shoulder down and back and this hip up and forward using this point, as the central axis, the more powerfully and balanced you're going to be able to rotate. You're going to be able to rotate with full loading and expression through the ground to harness all that you have to rotate better. That's the central axis. So what I want to do when I'm training the coiling core is I don't want to open this. I don't want to open that. I want to keep that steady with this down and back with the shoulder, and I'm going to give you the cueing to do it, and then this up and forward intention through the hip. And so it's this side bending coil, and we're never bending beyond the base. The head over foot is the technique, and the head over foot concept is consistent in the training. So if, let's say, somebody's taking a, a cable, a cable machine, and you're going from low to high and you're rotating, Conventional is you sort of come in here, right? You're, you're there, and then you come up and you rotate and pivot. You're here and you're here. Now, what you're really doing is you're applying a, a bracing core concept with this pivot where the spine itself really isn't rotating. So if I'm standing here like this and I pivot the back foot, you can notice the spine itself isn't doing a lot of rotation. Okay? So we're missing the opportunity to fortify the coiling core. So rather than take that here and come up and do this, what we'll do is we will fortify this here. So that I got a drive that's coming up and I'm coiled to here. And when you do this correctly, you will feel this incredible loading force through the ground, which means that I can, I can project with much more force and much more power with the rotation. And the idea, again, here is that we get at the heart of it, we train the foundation, and now, even when you do, you know, you're regular, you can now apply that principle. So if my foot's there and I apply that principle, I'm still much more powerful than if I haven't done that fundamental training. So, what we want to do is we want to coil around that access point, down and back, up and forward, and we use two cues to do this. One is elbow into the back pocket. To really get the most out of it, we even supinate the hand so that we wind up the lat. Pronating makes the lat long, supinating makes it coiled up. We drive the elbow down into the back pocket to the center, and it's for app. And we, our intention is drive this hip up and forward, keeping that as a central axis. The other cue that we use is take the scapula, the, the tip, the bottom tip of that triangle of the scapula, sort of the shoulder blade, and we want to drive that into the back pocket. And so the tighter we can do that with the scapula, the more freedom we're going to create here for application to throwing, hitting, punching, etc. So you're going to use that principle to just ingrain the skill, ingrain the skill. We can apply it to multiple modalities that I'll be teaching in other videos. We use the BOSU Elite, we use the RMT Club. We, we want to really develop this and spend a lot of our training effort on building this balance, strength, and coordination. So here's a simple 
drill that you can do to begin harnessing this, developing it. And it's like you're tapping into this untapped resource if you haven't done it before. So when I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back, have my head over my foot, and I want to coil as much as I possibly can, which means that when I'm coming down, this is driving up. Notice how my spine and shin angle are consistent. The weight is through the ball of my foot. It's not through the heel. So I'm here and I'm coiling as much as I can. That spot's not moving, not opening. I'm here getting the down portion. That's harnessing the full side bending portion. And I come here and I really, really contract. I take my time to do it and then I come up. And you just want to feel that, that, that integrated power of everything coming up with the uncoil. And then you just simply set it up on the other side, come in here, I'm coiled as much as I possibly can, and boom, I take it out. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to just go back and forth until you're good at it. So it's training, it's not just exercise. There's no sense, if you're training for athletics, there's no sense in doing something that's going to spend a lot of energy if it's not making you fundamentally better. So you really want to train the skill that's then going to apply to any rotation that you do. And once you have the coiling core, now any movement that you do, you're going to be able to harness the totality of it. This and this are sort of the root and the center, and they don't need to change to coil. It will make you a faster runner, better hitter, better thrower, better puncher, better jumper, all things athletic. So with WEC method, that's what we're teaching you. Optimize tensional balance, whether it's the bracing core or the coiling core, and you do this as a foundation. And what it's going to do is it's going to help you do everything that you do better. And we're really getting at the root of it, the foundation of it, so that we're not building skills upon something that isn't the, like the center of it, the true harnessing of the power of it. So just review real quick. It's simple. You take your center, keep your center more in the center so you don't bring the center over here. Head is over the foot and really try to drive this hip up and drive that shoulder down. You'll want to stretch real big before you do this, like this, open it up, head over foot, project this out, come here, and then the other side, you can always think down and back up and forward, because when you're doing this with great intensity, you'll get cramps in the beginning, okay? And the effect immediately after you do this is a sensation that you have instant carryover. You, you feel this, you feel this, boom, that there's a connection now, the extension and the flexion are magnified with that coiling action. The coiling action. And the, in locomotion, the head over the foot gives us that instant of perfect balance with the coil that comes up, comes up through the neutral, and you get the other side. And all of the elites, sprinters, distance, they do it. That's what they do. And so what you want to do is you want to fortify the, the true intention. And the, the common mistake, and this mistake is rampant, is to associate the bracing core with the athletic movement. You don't want to keep your shoulders level. You don't want to keep your head in the center and really brace to run because that's not fast. That's not powerful. You don't see the elites doing that. So if you're not doing it, you will experience an exponential boom. You'll ratchet up and be better that much faster. If you're clunky, you're strong, but you're not as athletic as you want to be, it's the, fast, it's the fast road. You start moving with that athletic grace. And if you're already doing it, you just get better and better at, better at it. Every millimeter matters. All right? Last thing, just going to review it one more time. It's here. 
coil that sucker, elbow in the back pocket, scapula in the back pocket. So really, really drive that up so that boom, and just boom, as opposed to where you're not coiling as tight. Very, very simple. And then the better you get at it, the more it's muscle memory, the more you have that unconscious competence, the stronger, more powerful, better you will perform in everything. That's the coiling core WEC method. Thank you.